Good afternoon, everyone. Yep, all good to go. How are we all? Hello. Crikey, we've got a few people already. Wow. <coughs> Hello. Let's see who's on. Julie, Panzervan, Simon Martin, Cheers. Cheers. Mike Jobson, Tony Potter, Julie Shot, Vera Scanlon, Stephen Pitt, Ian Higgins, Grant Percy, Exit Eleven, uh, Jackie Duncan, etc. Uh, etc. Et I can't name you all, sorry. Um, right. Today we're going to be cooking a tamarind chicken. Well, it's called South Indian Tamarind Chicken in my uh, <clears throat> my book, uh, my second book, should I say? Indian Restaurant Curry at Home, Volume Two. So there we go. It's packed full of um, excellent recipes. There's the actual uh, tamarind one. It probably won't look like that, but we'll try and get it as close as possible. So we'll have a look at the ingredients, yeah? <clears throat> How are we all, by the way? How's everyone the week gone and the weekend? Cool. All right, I'm just sort these ingredients out. All the right ingredients, but not necessarily in the right order. Okay. Get the camera focused. Let's get organized. Okay. Well, let me start talking about tamarinds. I'm sure you, most of you know what tamarind is. <clears throat> it's, tamarind is, it's a fruit. It's quite a sour fruit, it's packed full of flavor. And it's, um, it's basically quite a thick pulp comes out of it and you can get it in several different forms. It's used a lot in Indian cooking uh, for the sourness. Uh, now for this recipe, um, you can use one of three options. I'm using um, tamarind pulp, which I've squeezed into a paste. That's probably the best option, the freshest option. Here's the, uh, the block I used. You can buy them, these blocks, that's about, I've used some of it up, but it's, you can get these from all supermarkets nowadays, or any, any good supermarket. And the big ones in the Asian section will do them, and they're probably, I don't know, 50, 60, 70p for a block. You probably need about, ugh, a third of, a third of a block. With that, what you do is you dilute it with very hot water or boiling water. Um, mash it up, leave it to um, soak for 10-15 minutes and then mash it up again. Then sieve it <clears throat> and then you end up with this nice sort of thick thick paste. Depends how much water you put in it, depending on how concentrated it'll be. So it's, it's a bit hit and miss. If I say two, three tablespoons of this, it could mean two tablespoons of what you've produced from it. But if you, you just happen to have used less water. Okay, option two. <clears throat> which is probably my second favorite option, is to use a, a shop-bought tamarind um, table sauce like this. Uh, other brands are available. Uh, I, I use this, I have got another brand as well. And this has got sugar and other stuff in it as well, so you need to bear that in mind, um, because we're gonna add some um, sweetness to the curry later. So you need to make sure that um, you compensate. So if you're using this, you, you might wanna use a little less sugar it's very much down to taste this dish and we can adjust near the end. So we're going to be careful with what we add to begin with. Option three, concentrate. Um, it's convenient. It's very thick. You only need a little bit. Well, I should have said you probably need a, a few tablespoons of that, maybe three or four tablespoons perhaps, if you're using the table sauce. Now the concentrate is like Marmite uh, well, in thickness. It's very jet black and it'll stick to your spoon. For this dish, you're probably going to want about half to three quarters of a teaspoon, a level teaspoon of that, and it will stick to the spoon, so you need to sort of like oil the spoon beforehand so it'll come off easily. Other brands are available. <clears throat> right, let's talk about the rest of the ingredients. Um, if this is a tamarind chicken. Chicken goes very well with this, this curry. Um, in fact, I'm using chicken tikka. Uh, I did have some regular chicken, but I ate it all yesterday. So chicken tikka there, without the red food colouring. That's just, just how I happen to make that batch. 
We've got to we're going to use some oil, about three tablespoons of oil, holding back a little bit on what we usually use because we've got some coconut milk coming in later. We've got some whole spices. Uh, we've got half a teaspoon of cumin seeds, a whole black cardamom, which we're going to split open and take the seeds out and put the seeds in the curry and discard the husk. And we've got some cassia bark, probably about five to ten centimetres of that. That will go in at the beginning to temper the oil. Uh, we're not going to use any onions in this. This is going to be quite a nice smooth curry, quite saucy as well. We're going to use a couple of teaspoons of ginger garlic paste, but less than what's in there. <clears throat> uh, we have the powdered spices. We've got about just over a teaspoon of mixed powder. Um, I put a quarter teaspoon of chilli powder in just for a tiny bit of taste. You don't have to put any in, you can put more in if you want. Uh, we've got about a quarter teaspoon of salt. We're going to be adding a pickle later on, which and pickles are very salty, as you probably know. Um, so just to sort of tone down the, the added salt at this point, and it's got about a teaspoon of um, of cassori methi. Right, there's the chicken. Got a generous portion now. You can use however much you want. This this portion. Uh, will we'll probably be enough for two if you if you bulk out the chicken enough. There's going to be plenty of sauce with it. Um, you know, that's probably going to feed two average people, I would imagine, without any leftovers. What else we've got? We've got tomato puree. But that's about a tablespoon of tomato puree. Uh, you know, the double concentrated stuff mixed with um, three tablespoons of water. You could also use passata, say four tablespoons of passata or blend some uh, chopped, um, sorry, blend some peeled plum tomatoes up and put those in. Again, about four tablespoons. But for puree, you only want about one tablespoon and mix it with water. Okay, we've got some pickle. We'll add a nice tang to it. Um, I'm gonna use less than what's in there, probably about a teaspoon or so, a teaspoon and a half. Pickle is very salty, as I said before. Okay. And to provide a bit of balance, because it is quite a sour dish, we want a little bit of sweetness to, to balance things off. We've got some um, jaggery here. That's probably about two teaspoons. Uh, you could use brown sugar as well, just for a nicer flavour. If you haven't got either of those, just you can use white sugar. You could even use mango chutney if you wanted. By the way, pickle, I've masked it up. Most pickles you get are like full of lumps. I like, because uh, I want this to be quite a smooth sauce, I, I like to chop it up. So I've, I've chopped that up quite small. And uh, yeah, that's all the ingredients. Not leaving out the base gravy. We're gonna use probably about 350, 380 uh, milliliters, slightly more than usual. And we're gonna have the coconut milk added to, and it is quite thick actually, the coconut milk. Um, so despite having more base gravy, um, it will sort of end up being a nice sauce, you know, a nice curry with plenty of sauce. Right, let's get cooking. So who's cooking along then? Have we got any, anyone cooking along? Oh, uh, Gareth, the pickle I'm using is just a uh, mixed pickle. What I had in the fridge. So anyone cooking along? You can make this vindaloo hot if you like. You could add extra chilli powder or fresh green chilies or both. Ah, Peter Strug's cooking along. Well done. Cooking in the Carolinas, 30 degrees. Oh, don't make us jealous, Robbo. Robbo's in the USA and it's 30 degrees outdoors, cooking on a grill. Right, all right, let's uh, get this camera pointing in the right direction. So I'm just gonna rinse that pan out, it's not very clean. Then. 
base gravy heat on. Get that warming up. So to the pan, I'm going to add, oops, that's about a tablespoon and a half, two and a half, it's about three tablespoons of oil. I'm using sunflower oil, you could use any oil you want. I'm not sure olive oil would work very well. Or sesame oil or mustard oil, but well, you could use mustard oil, I suppose. Or you could use ghee, vegetable ghee, butter ghee, or you mix it half and half with oil. Yeah, this is from my uh, second book, Indian Restaurant Carry at Home, Volume 2, which is readily available on Amazon Book Depository. If you, if you live outside the UK, you can get it worldwide from Book Depository with free, free worldwide delivery. Hello to everyone who's just joined. Uh, thank you very much, Scar. Scar Mask Music, you've made this before and um, you like it, that's good. Okay, oil is now nice and hot, so I'm going to add the, the um, cumin seeds and the cassia bark. And what I'm going to do is get this black cardamom, split it open and put the seeds from it inside. The smoky flavour of the black, car ugh, black cardamom will, will complement this hammer in very nicely. on fairly low to medium right now. I'm also using, um, as in my previous videos, I'm using um, not the gas burner I would usually use. I'd usually use this one over here on your right, which is higher, um, cooks faster, better, slightly better flavour I think. But I'm using a lower one um, just so it gives time for talking and not getting in a kerfuffle. Uh, yeah, you can make it with king prawns. If, you, if you're using raw chicken, um, you, you can add it soon. I'll tell you when. Uh, for pre-cooked chicken or chicken tikka or any, any kind of meat that's already cooked, then it goes in halfway through. It's really just to heat it through. If you want to use prawns, we're going to add them. You'll add them about a couple of minutes before the end and uh, cook until they're... Until they're uh, safe and sweet. Likewise if you did if you are using vegetables like <coughs> chickpeas or whatever they, those will go in it, it depends on they, whether they're cooked or not some vegetables you need to pre-cook like cauliflower potato whatnot but uh, anything pre-cooked will put in roughly about halfway through. <coughs> Alright it's been sizzling away it's going to be quite hot I'm going to let it cool down a little bit because I'm going to add the ginger and garlic paste. Okay. Get the trusty temperature going out on nine. You can't see it from there. But I think that's about right now. It won't quite explode. So it's about a teaspoon and a half of ginger garlic paste. I'm going to cook it until the sizzling stops and the rawness, the raw smell goes away. <laughs> Mark Stewart, I'm costing you a lot of money. Hopefully I'm going to save you a lot of money when you, all that money you would have been spending on takeaways. As an initial outlay. Spices and the books, if you've got to buy the books first, of course, but you've got spices and maybe, you know, 
and then and whatnot. But honestly, you cook it every week, you'll be quids in. Or cook it twice a week, you get your money back even quicker. In fact, one of my best friends is a. Uh, he was a. He was absolutely skint one year ago. He's a millionaire now. So stick with me. Uh, Robbo, your ginger garlic explodes when I add it. Yeah, you've got the pan too hot, that's why. You need to make sure it's uh, it's not too hot. That's why I took mine off, because I was conscious that, you know, the, the, the heat had built up in the pan. Okay. Now we're going to add uh, the mixed spices. So a teaspoon and a quarter of, of um, mixed powder. I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of chilli powder, you can do what you want with it. Um, a teaspoon of kasuri methi and about a quarter teaspoon of salt. There we go. You see that's like quietly fizzing away. Normally you cook it on slightly higher heat and you'd have to be a bit more careful and quicker um, to make sure it doesn't burn. But this, this, um, this, this is quite safe there at the moment, but I'm going to add just a touch of base gravy to, to give it time for the spices to cook out. You know, add a bit of caramelisation. And give that 20 30 seconds from when I first add the spices. If you've got some um, raw chicken, add it now. Go in with the tomato paste. We'll cook that down until the oil separates a little bit and put the rawness out of the tomato puree, bring out the sweetness of it. So, as I, as I said before, just add your raw chicken in now. Make sure it's sort of coated well with the sauce. It helps stop it drying out. So I'll turn this down for a second and read what people are saying. Jeff Jukes has six a week. My God, yeah, that's a lot. And the key ingredient, chilled white wine into you, Robbo. Right, good idea. Actually, I haven't got a drink today. What shall I drink, guys and girls? I'm going to add my chicken seeker in now. You've got your pre-cooked meat, add it, add it now. Remember also that when you add like chicken tikka, it's already quite, it's nicely spiced already with a, with a bit of seasoning salt already in it. Well, that adds to the salt content. That's another reason to be careful with the, the added salt you put in. Beer cobra, I'm gonna get a beer. guys we've got a uh, nice oil separation there it's time to turn the heat up a little bit and put in the first ladle of base gravy about 75 milliliters I'm going to turn the heat up now so that it can start cooking and caramelizing reducing down Cheers everyone, other brands are available. Oh, by the way, uh, like, subscribe, share, and hit that <coughs> bell icon, please. Has to be said. Uh, yeah, it's got a nice color. It'll darken further when we put the tamarind in, but also when we put the coconut milk in, that will, um, it will reduce the, it will um, lighten up. Again. The 
want to be cooking that for, I'll leave it actually, I'm fiddling with it unnecessarily a lot because I'm talking to you, drinking beer and trying to concentrate on three different things at once. My hand starts fiddling with things. You see what's happening there? It's just like forming this like nice cratering. And that's where all, a lot of flavour comes in. And there's all the separation. And you've got a bit of crustiness forming around the edge. It's all good. Right, I think that's about ready for another another 75 millilitres approximately of base gravy. Always had the base gravy in its uh, watered down state. It used to be, I always say, in the, in the, about the thickness of semi skim milk. So if you've, if you've frozen your base gravy and it's thick, then just, just um, add enough water to make it about semi skim milk consistency, which happens to be roughly about the same amount of water as there is base gravy. But it might differ if you if you depends on if you've left the lid off the base gravy when it's been cooking when you've been originally making it obviously more water will have evaporated and therefore it'll be thicker than normal so but as long as the most important thing is you you, you get it that semi-skim milk consistency without actually adding semi-skim milk to it please don't i haven't had anyone do that yet but i'm just worried that somebody will do and complain Crater starting to form again, oil separation. Right. Coming along nicely. It would have been ready to move on from now if I was using a higher flame, but I'm only using a medium, equivalent of a medium flame. JJ Williams 1984, yeah, veggie version, mango chunk. That would be, that would be quite nice actually. The mango is quite sour and sweet at the same time. And add nice, um, nice contrast to it. <clears throat> so hello to anyone who's just joined. This is our Misty Ricardo here from Misty Ricardo's Curry Kitchen, where I'm standing cooking. Uh, we're making a South Indian tamarind chicken from my second book, Indian Restaurant Curry at Home, Volume 2. And um, lots of useful information I gave at the start about the ingredients, so please, please um, watch from the start, all that. I think we're about ready for a third label now. We're going to use about 150 or so. And there, we'll whack the heat up to start up. I think you get on this particular gap burner. You can stir it once. Just distribute things around and then leave it again for another minute or so. I'm not looking for anything when I'm moving the, the chunks of meat. I'm just really making sure they're coated with the sauce, that's all. Uh, Vera, uh, very good question. Uh, <laughs> I can't possibly answer that in one sentence, but it's, it, in a nutshell, it's to, to keep the temperature high and allow the sauce to thicken and caramelise and, and stick to the, the pan and generate lots of flavour. You need to, I'm, I keep plugging my books, of course I do, but there's a very, very, very detailed section in my first book, Volume 1, which, which talks you through the exact reasons and how to do it. And if you look on my YouTube channel here, there are some, there are some great videos demonstrating um, how to do it and, and why. Great. I think it's worthwhile spending the time. There's, 
there's a, a basic curry sauce. That's the title of the video. That is a very is informative, you know, about the basics of, you know, cooking good DIR curry. But that is British Indian restaurant style curry. And um, there's another one. What was it? Scale. I did an upscaling one, which is more if you're interested in cooking like four, five portions at once. And that's uh, chicken madras for four to six people. But other than that, I mean, I've got over 100 videos on my channel cooking various all the, all the curries. So you can watch. You can watch the exact technique um, on the original versions. Now it's time to add the tamarind. We're going to be careful with it because you can't, obviously you can't take it away once you put it in. But for my tamarind pulp extract, which is this thick, I'm going to add two tablespoons of that now. You might want to add, if you're using concentrate, half a teaspoon, half a level teaspoon. So three quarters, something like that. And if you're using a, a bottle of tamarind table sauce, maybe add two to three tablespoons of that. And um, what we're going to do is adjust it, taste it, and adjust it near the end. We're going to also add in uh, the pickle. That's a, a mixed pickle which has been chopped up. I'm going to put in, say, about probably about a teaspoon and a half or so. And we're going to put in the brown sugar. I'm going to put in, that's jaggery here. I'm going to put in about two teaspoons of that. Again, we can always adjust the sugar at the end. I'll turn the heat down, by the way, just so I can focus. The sugar will dissolve nicely. Don't worry about it being lumpy. Now, finally, coconut milk. This is very thick coconut milk, actually. The brand I'm using for this, what is it? Aroi D, again, other brands are available. Um, that's the one I'm using. Very thick. I'm using about um, 150 millilitres of that. And you can see now that the colour's lightened. With that in, I'm going to incorporate that in, turn the heat up again. And in a minute or so, we're going to taste it and adjust. Add it with a bit more base sauce. I want this curry to be nice and smooth and lots of sauce with it. I just think I like, I like the idea of that. But we still need to thicken it up nicely. So what, what are you guys drinking then, if anything? Oh, Vera, I didn't make pickle, no, it's a, a standard, it's a fairly standard uh, Asian brand of mixed pickle. There are many, many different brands and varieties. I think it's important to use an, uh, an Indian style one with spices in it. So, nice and tasty. JD, Thatcher's, Risley. Wow. Yeah, I fancy the idea of a JD and Coke, but uh, I'm running in. But anyway, this beer will do. Cheers, anyway. Tea, sensible Roger the Dodger. I'm drinking tea. Pinot, noir, red wine. Yeah, I agree, Jane, because red wine is the way forward. It's also the way backward as well. Depends on how much you drink. Paul, hello Paul, he's moderating for me today. Um, sparkling water and a slice of lime, that's very healthy. Did you um, not find the gym? Uh, Paul, yes, you can use low fat coconut milk. Yep, you can. Indeed, you can use low fat anything. Obviously, you're going to get more flavour if you use the full fat one, but if that's what you prefer, you can do that. 
uh, Terence. Um, I'm not averse to having unrelated questions in, but really, you know, going to be a bit sort of uh, somewhat relevant. Um, ask me on my uh, video and I'll answer it. Nothing wrong with hipster beers, chairs. It's, what's yours called? It's never been like that pale IPA. <laughs> anyway, you see, we've got a nice, um, nice oil separation here. We've got caramelization forming on the bottom of the pan, which I'm gonna, gonna scrape in. I'll leave this again to form once more. Well, I think another another minute or two we're done. I've just tasted off off a spoon. And I think I'm gonna just add just a little bit more tamarind, it's about half a teaspoon of the you know of the paste. And I'll add a tiny bit more sugar. The pickle element is fine in it. I think the stuff like coconut milk, when you add it to a, a BR curry, it, it, it increases the amount of adhesion to the bottom of the pan, I've noticed. I'm going to cook that down for a little bit longer. I really want to bring out the sweetness of the base gravy. Time flies, it's half, half five already. So there's quite a lot of oil floating on top. The coconut milk has got a lot of oil in it. You know what, what you can do with this is spoon off the oil, the extra oil, at the end of cooking, which certainly I'll be doing it with this. The pickle would have had a little bit of oil in it as well. It all adds up. And the base gravy's got some in it. See, it's really sticking at the bottom there, that. All good. Just want to make sure it doesn't burn. I'm just in with it. Oh God, this base gravy has been sitting in the pan hot, so it's like really thickened up. I'm just going to use it up rather than waste it. Let's scrape the sides of the pan down as well. A lot of that crustiness has got a lot of flavour. Very much down to your own taste how you how you adjust the, the sweet and sour elements of this <coughs> but it should be this curry should be more sour than sweet focus on the tamarind i think that's about done all right let's plate up There we go. Now there's a lot of oil on it. What you can do is just spoon it off. I'm going to leave some on for presentation purposes because it gives it a nice sheen. Not to make a mess. I want to take a photo of this in a minute. Okay, I 
think that's I think we'll get away with that for presentation purposes. So let me take a quick photo on another device. <clears throat> One second, please. Okay, now this looks very nice. It is very oily. I'm going to scoop the rest of the oil off afterwards, but I want to take, uh, I want to take this right now into my mouth. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, no, there's no coriander in this dish. You can't have coriander in everything because everything tastes of coriander. I know it's a very common theme. That's really nice. Let's try a bit of the chicken tikka. Is anyone else tasting what they've cooked? <coughs> yeah, it is very, very tasty. I like. I wanted quite a smooth sauce, and when, when you 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 don't put sort of ingredients which will bulk it up too much, like onions, it sort of forms a a nicer texture. That everything kind of flocks together, if that's the right phrase to use. But here we go. Right, taste this now. Mm. Very nice. Yeah, I'm very happy with that. I'm hoping you're gonna try this. It may not be to your taste, you might think, no, that's, you know, I'm not a fan of tamarind, but if you do, I think you'll like it. And the joy of it, you can customise it to your to your liking. You could even add some cream in or yoghurt. And of course, put a bit of garnish on it, like a lemon, like that. So. Anyway, any questions? Uh, yes, I'd, for this, I'd have rice with it. Yeah, probably plain rice. It's, it's quite a rich, quite a lot going on richness in it so I just have plain plain basmati. Mm. Yeah, very tasty. What I would you don't know, it's quite a rich dish as I said. I think if I was serving this, I'd probably serve it alongside one or two other dishes to achieve a bit of contrast. I mean, the, you've got this, which is sort of tangy and sweet and sour, well, sour. Um, you might want a sort of really hot curry to go with it. Perhaps a, a vindaloo or something, and then like a really mild one. But like, um, <clears throat> like even a korma or a pasanda. I think those three would go nicely together and you could have plain rice and you could have maybe onion and cumin and onion pilo rice on the side be some bombay potatoes but that's like we're talking a day's work there anyway thanks very much for coming along a smaller group this time but all the right people are here so on that note i will give you a close-up and say goodbye. Goodbye.
Mm. Thanks again. Bye-bye.